week and a half left in school, but superintendents having to make some weather-related changes in the schedule due to that heat. And that includes the East Syracuse Manoa School District. We're joined right now by ESM School Superintendent Dr. Donna Desiato. Thanks so much for being with us in the studio today. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so Donna, you did make, we, we hinted at it, uh, some changes to the schedule. What, what are they, especially impacting the younger kids, and what happens with the Regents exams? Sure, the Regents exams are ongoing. Uh, the Regents exams uh, are either in an air-conditioned setting within the high school or somewhere within the district, and those are designated sites, and they must be administered at the time that the state has designated. Uh, they cannot be changed. And uh, so th those are all in place and they are all go ongoing each and every day. Little kids though, younger kids? For the younger students, we actually modified the schedule for this week. Uh, we actually, with Park Hill, um, we actually um, did not have our afternoon okay. session only this afternoon for the Park Hill but for, uh, students. But um, for our elementary schools and our middle school, starting tomorrow, we will be on a shortened day. So this. Schedules are different for the buildings, and they've commu been communicated um, with what those building release times are. But really, that's because as the buildings heat up during the morning hours, mm -hmm. the capacity of what we may have in air cooling systems or air conditioning systems in certain spaces will be challenged in being able mm -hmm. to keep the buildings at any kind of temperature that would be in a range that we believe would be healthy for mm -hmm. our students. And then our staff can, in the afternoon, go two spaces that would be climate controlled or air conditioned and they can continue with professional learning or end of the year responsibilities. Okay. So a lot of people wonder why aren't more spaces fully air conditioned? Why aren't we there yet? Sure, you know, that that, that comes with capital improvement projects mm -hmm. and I, as you know, we've uh, certainly undertaken several and many, but the addition and we've added air conditioning in each of our projects to some level. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But doing that in, in air conditioning the entire building actually takes millions and millions of dollars wow. yeah. along with the what it takes to then sustain it with the increased electrical costs mm -hmm. um, and energy costs. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, ideally, I think that it's something that we would want perhaps the state to have a, uh, a, a, a bond that would mm -hmm. help us with health and safety matters. Mm -hmm because these are not individual kinds of funding that comes to a school district on either the health side of the agenda or on the safety side of the agenda. So we always have to go back and do a capital mm. improvement project and I, I think you'll see more and more referendums that will include more air conditioning. But right now, most districts do not have fully air-conditioned right. buildings. It's a cost thing. Um, let's, we want to we shift gears a little bit, talk a little bit of security with you, um, sure. specifically about the sandwich bag with, with bullets that was found in Pine Grove Middle School bathroom. Um, you tried to, you know, get communication out there, calm fears of parents, but um, they were still upset. Um, it seems like there was some sort of disconnect, I guess. Where, where do you think that disconnect came? Certainly. Well, first, I, I want to again reinforce that our students did the right thing mm -hmm. they are t they have learned that if you see something find something hear something say something they immediately reported it to our school patrol officer so we want to commend our students mm -hmm. i think the other part of this that becomes every any incident heightens people's anxiety and their levels of concern um, we do have a manliest town of the Manliest town of police officer on site mm -hmm. full time every day. Um, so we're not waiting for the police to arrive. Immediately when the students turned over, actually to the police officer, mm. uh, the, this, the evidence of what they found um, with this bag, this sandwich baggie um, that contained ammunition, uh, the police officer took possession of that. It became a police matter immediately. And in, in any type of incident that involves any type of weapon or ammunition or something of that nature, a knife, the, automatically the police are brought into those and they take the lead on those measures. What happens in addition to that though is what happens with regard to uh, the, the communication based on their assessment. So their assessment was that there was no presence of any threat of violence at the building or in relation to this incident of finding this, uh, these items. Uh, that is a police threat assessment. They may, that's what they're trained to do. Uh, the, in it, at the same time, the building administration wanted to inform parents 
of what was happening because we also know that it's inevitable that if a few students know, more students will know very quickly because of texting and other things of that nature. So they sent communications and we will be reviewing all communications, the timing, the content, the recipients, the sequence as part of our after action review process, as part of looking at the procedures. Because what does happen is we are constrained and so are the police when there is an ongoing investigation or when there is an open disciplinary matter it, with regard to being restricted uh, in being able to share information. It's certain federal specific. law and state law, it right? Is, right? Education Federal law? Education yeah. Privacy Act, mm -hmm. known as FERPA. Uh, when that happens, the information that can't be shared, um, people have a void and they commonly will fill in that void mm -hmm. with speculation, with rumors, with what they might see on a social media mm -hmm. site. Um, and a social media site may not have accurate information. Uh, those types of rumors then create even a greater mm -hmm. level of concern. And there was a lot of concern, rumors about punishment for the student right. who brought the bullets. I, and I know you can't speak about specifics, right? but in a case like this, generally, what kind of school discipline is there? Sure. So the code of conduct, which we have, is based on New York State education law. Uh, and while, right, the, it does, I'm not allowed to speak on a specific student matter, what we do want everyone to know is the more serious the misconduct, the more serious the violation. Bringing ammunition to school is a very serious violation of the code. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's important for people to know that, that the code then provides for how to deal with a more serious violation. I think some now, people were also uh, interested to know that there were actually no criminal charges. Police looked at that. That's not your lane, but they looked at it and said there were no applicable criminal charges, right? That, 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 is, the, that is based on the police. The police do the actual criminal mm -hmm. investigation. The school district, and we became aware of a social media post, mm -hmm that said there had been a short-term suspension and we immediately got out there to say that is not accurate. Mm -hmm. Because we want people to know when we can demonstrate that it's not accurate. But with regard to criminal charges, you would have, the, the, what the chief went on record of saying is there are no criminal charges at this time. Oh, okay. okay. The investigation is still open and the chief has cited that the investigation is still open or the case is still open, I should say. The part of the investigation that concluded with a juvenile suspect and having enough information to turn to the district to take its procedures to a disciplinary matter uh, was one part of that. But anything else regarding criminal charges would be for the police and the chief of police to be able to respond to. Okay. Yeah, very good. Um, Donna, we got through a lot there. Um, we're gonna have you back um, soon because we wanna talk, there's a lot of changes potentially coming, seems likely, to regions. Diplomas, exams, a lot to get to. We'll let you get out on that. We're we excited. We peppered you a so lot. So no break okay. for you, even though the no kids break. are gonna be out real soon. <laughs> no, no break. No summer vacation. <laughs> and I'd like to tell you that those changes are gonna come sooner, yeah. but I think that we'll have time before anything okay. changes. Yeah. Good. It's very helpful for yeah. parents to try to sort mm -hmm. it all out and get Absolutely. Some yeah. information from you. So Absolutely. we appreciate you and taking time And I would hope that, that whatever, whenever it's helpful mm -hmm. for parents, that we can provide that clarity and that information. We always uh, appreciate you. Communication's key. Exactly, exactly. Thank you. We've got more local